welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 172nd episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today we're going to talk about getting back into that groove as we transition from summer to fall. We're going to refine our style. and We don't just mean clothing style, although we are going to talk about that. When we talk about style, we talk about our life, how we live. And the shift from summer to fall offers a wonderful opportunity to amp up to recalibrate and get on the track that we have always wanted to be on. And as we grow and as we go through our lives, things can be tweaked, edited, tossed, added as we get to know ourselves a little better, as we get to know the world a little bit better, as our schedules and lives change. So I'm going to share with you six ways to refine your style today. But before I do that, I want to share a review that was posted on iTunes and give a huge thank you to Indie Girl underscore 1997 titled Love the Focus on Enjoying Life. She gave us five stars and here's what she wrote. I recently found Shannon's website and podcast after a recent trip to Europe. Although I don't desire to live a Parisian lifestyle, I'm intrigued by the simpler way of life in some European countries. This podcast focuses on the many things we often take for granted, demonstrating gratitude, living your best life, and being true to yourself. I'm enjoying catching up on older podcasts and anxiously await her new weekly podcast. Listening in the morning is my petit plaisir. Thank you very much for your very specific feedback and comments about what you enjoy about this podcast, because ultimately that's how new listeners truly understand and then begin to trust what they're going to discover if they choose to tune in. So I want to thank you for your time and your interest in tuning in, and I hope you enjoy today's podcast as well. Now, if you enjoy this podcast, you actually do not have to leave a written review. You can do something as simple as just choose the star that you feel best reflects the quality of this podcast. But let's get to today's episode. Titled, How to Refine Your Style in Your Wardrobe and Life, I want to begin with a quote from Marielle Giuliano in her book that she wrote in 2010, Women, Work, and the Art of Savoir-Faire. For me, style is Z, whole package how you dress, talk, move, and behave. It all goes together into that first impression equation. It shouldn't be confused with chic. An extremely chic or well-dressed woman may have zero sense of style. Style is definitely more about who the person is inside. Confidence and individuality are two strong assets for developing your personal style. Can it be taught? To a certain extent, yes. But at the end of the day, it has to do a lot with being bien dans sa peau, knowing thyself and having balance in one's life. Now, I apologize. My French probably wasn't the best in that. But this idea of style goes beyond just what we wear. It's the woman that wears the clothing. And how you exude that has to come from your confidence in who you are, what you're doing, what you're wearing, and your sense of self, that signatureness that makes you, you. And that's something we've talked about a lot on this podcast and in the blog. But today I'd like to talk about fine-tuning, tweaking, and reassessing how we can become even more stylish. So let's get started. With a new season of clothing and a new season at work, as we all return from rest and relaxation, some of us from travel, some of us simply from a lighter schedule or at least a different one as we work with everyone else's change of schedules during the summer months. As is the case, the shift provides an opportunity to reassess, restructure, edit, and start fresh or press restart. Muriel Giuliano is often a woman I look to for inspiration when it comes to living well and finding success in a career in equal proportion. In her book, as I just mentioned, from which I pulled the quote, she speaks to the goal of attaining one's unique style and therefore presence as we go about our workdays, meeting potential clients, customers, or fellow colleagues. Inspired by today's quote, I created my own list of 
prepping for September as I too will be heading back into my teaching schedule in a few days. And I'm always re-examining how to refine my way of living to elevate the quality as summer ends and fall begins. So often summer provides an opportune time to reflect, recharge, reassess what is and isn't working and come to the end of August with some ideas. So let's get started and take a look at six ways to refine your style. Number one, select and keep quality. As was discussed last Thursday with Helen Raptus on AM Northwest, um, I had the opportunity to be on Portland's morning talk show. We talked about how to curate a capsule wardrobe, and I actually brought my fall wardrobe on the set. So if you're curious to watch that segment, I have a link in today's show notes. You can watch it. It's about six minutes. I break down the benefits and how to create your capsule wardrobe. And one of the components is that we welcome quality into the choices that we make with our clothing. And in doing so, we save ourselves time and money in the long run, as well as elevate our confidence as we have selected items that work best with our bodies and lifestyle. As well, selecting quality comes into play when we select our words, select the food we enjoy, select the people we welcome into our inner circle, select how we spend our free time. I will admit, I need my television show, Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce on Bravo, from time to time. Yes, it's season four now, I think, every Thursday night, as I need to unwind and just tune out. And these kind of shows help me do that. But I also have a news magazine that I read, The New Yorker. I have PBS, one of my favorite channels on television, saved. And I also always have a book that I'm reading that's offering some kind of new knowledge. In fact, I'm excited to read Brene Brown's new book, Braving the Wilderness. And there's always something new and interesting to absorb in these books. Today, I want you to examine your life. Where is the quality and what is standing in its way if you're trying to welcome it and it's just not working? What feeds you in a way that lifts you up, reinvigorates you and cultivates enthusiasm to live and live well? Sometimes things, people, and ways of thinking enter our mind over a period of time or months that as we contemplate them, because they come in small drips, not in big gulps, and so it doesn't overwhelm us or or doesn't become obvious. So these small drips happen over time. And when we look back and we start to contemplate what they're doing to our lives, we realize they do not serve us well. It is hard to notice at first because it's gradual, but over time we can compare the before and after, and recognize a decline in the quality of our energy, excitement, hope, health, or anything we wish to strengthen. Look where you feel depleted and ask why. Often the answer is to eliminate something that is no longer acting in a way that is elevating the quality of your life and unfortunately minimizing it. So number one is select and keep quality as you sit down and reassess how you're going to go forward into the fall season. Number two, be honest about your body. Speaking about style with regards to clothing, as Muriel points out, nobody's body is perfect. Nobody's. Not even Gigi Hadid, who I'm sure it appears to be perfect, but it's still a human body. Often we berate ourselves for not being what we hope we might look like. Find what you love about your physique. If you notice something you can improve that would enhance your health, create a plan and approach to make those changes that you seek. Otherwise, or in the meantime, as you're making progress to that goal, adorn your body so that you love what you wear and therefore you radiate a self-confidence that is inviting and engaging because you are beautiful just as you are. And there is more to you than just what's on the surface. I say this to you and I say this to myself because it is easy to forget about that as we do get bombarded by fashion this and fashion that. There is so much more than what meets the eye. When we tweak our capsule wardrobe, we have to keep in mind it will take time. But hey, maybe this season, add one quality blouse that works with at least two other items you already have and you will give yourself two more outfits that will make you look and feel your best. On this note of creating or adding to or editing your fall capsule wardrobe, this Friday, the 1st of September, this season's Simply Luxurious Life shopping guide will be released. And so be sure to stop by because what I'll do, as I've been doing for the last four years, 
is that I go through the trends and I break down which ones are worth investing in that will stand the test of time, that will be something you'll want to wear for years on, on end. And then I also break down the saves, the ones that maybe you just want to play with them and not really invest much money. Maybe this fun little accessory that would be good costume jewelry, but you don't want to spend a lot of money and just let you know what's going on this season. So what to keep a keep an eye out for what's going to be in the shops and things you maybe don't want to pay full price for right now, but you're going to save them on coupon cabin or shop tagger just so that when it does go on sale, if you're still interested, you can buy it. So be sure to stop by this Friday, September 1st to check out this uh, season's shopping guide. All right. So number two is be honest about your body. Number three, own your style and celebrate the uniqueness of others. As I shared in a post I wrote a few months ago, our signature style will continue to evolve as we go throughout life. However, upon knowing and feeling confident in the style you have chosen for your body, lifestyle, and personality, you could step into each morning with confidence and celebrate rather than mimic or feel envious of others. I, for example, admire Meghan Markle's style on USA's Suits the drama that's now on Wednesday nights, I believe. Her slim frame just below the knee pencil skirts and neatly tucked cashmere sweaters always get my attention. And while I draw inspiration for ideas on what to pair with my signature style since I wear pencil skirts, I celebrate her physique and recognize and am honest with myself that I have a more muscular frame. So it's not about being envious. It's about seeing what other people are doing and saying, oh, that's definitely my style. What can I bring into mind? And not comparing yourself, but getting ideas. And then if it's someone's style that's different from yours, not saying, oh, mine's not good enough, or that's not a great style, saying, good for you, own it. And I think when we choose to celebrate others, um, and not only what they wear, but what they're doing or how they're living, we liberate ourselves from unnecessary loss of energy. Because when we do compare, when we do sit there and go, oh, what was she thinking? Or, oh, I can't do that. Or I wish I could do that. When we dwell on those things, we really do zap energy that that's better well spent doing something positive or productive. And it also creates a more welcoming environment to engage with people and to applaud the differences. So number three is own your style and celebrate the uniqueness of others. Four, find time to be well. Your life requires healthy fuel in order for you to reach your optimal potential. Such healthy fuel comes in the form of a restful deep night's sleep in a bed that beckons, cuddles, and restores you. A mind that is given the tools to understand how to let go of what is not helpful. A day, each day, that is given time to breathe. Moments to step away from expectations and catch your breath. Gather the proper perspective and return anew. Exercise that excites, reduces stress, and strengthens and cares for your body. Ideas, art, information that broadens your mind and deepens your understanding of your role in it and moments to engage with others in a way that is healthy, loving, playful, and kind. Another strategy to make sure you feed yourself well and, and, and find time to refuel is knowing what activities you can engage in that will reduce your stress when you find yourself overwhelmed because there are going to be days where we just have no control and the circumstances do heighten our stress. So I've included a link to a post that I wrote a few weeks ago that offers a handful of different ways and activities that you can engage in to reduce your stress. So that's number four, find time to be well. Number five, clarify your journey. Ask yourself, why are you doing what you are doing? Why are you living the way you are living? What do you hope to cultivate in your every days and in your future by going about your precious 24 hours the way you do right now? Are you spending your money in a way that supports your goals? Are you spending time working on projects that are meaningful to you and align with the person you know you are? Even if you already have your goals set, take a moment and check in. Sometimes simply by seeing how we are progressing, we can be jump-started as we see how close we are to our goals. So number five is clarify your journey. And number six, believe in a better tomorrow and savor today. No matter how wonderful or perhaps frustrating life may be right now, tomorrow has the potential to be beautifully bright. The key is how we approach our every days. Have we cleared out the clutter and the weight that is holding us down, draining our energy and preventing us from being energized? If so, toss it and welcome the quality. 
What is our attitude? Do we need a mindset reboot? If so, seek out experts and books to help give you tools to reframe how you gaze at life. I want to share a quote with you by Thomas Byram. We are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make the world. Our thoughts really are that powerful. Well, there'll be times where we think, oh my gosh, I caused that to happen. The fact that you're catching yourself and saying, oh, I was thinking this, maybe I manifested it. You're already headed in the right direction to fixing your thoughts. So again, don't berate yourself for what you haven't done yet or haven't done well. Just applaud yourself for recognizing it because that's already a step in the right direction for shifting your thoughts to create the world you truly do want to live in. Most important is to recognize the beauty in the day you have right now. What is going well? Are you healthy? Are your loved ones healthy? As I created today's episode, Norman is snoring rhythmically below me and Oscar is snuggled by my side. The beautiful sky is calm here in Bend with a hint of a breeze and there is food in the refrigerator. Maybe my heart is broken and maybe yours is too at this moment. But there is so much to find goodness within if only we take time to look. Tomorrow will be better, but today can be quite sweet if we shift our perspective. So number six is believe in a better tomorrow and savor today. How we approach our days is a determining factor in the quality of our everydays and therefore our life. I consider those who have figured out how to go about their days in such a way style masters. It doesn't mean life won't throw them a curveball. It doesn't mean their clothing choices won't change as they move through the decades. But it does mean they adapt, stay centered, remain positive and resilient, understanding the tools that are needed to be honed and strengthened, always at the ready to be used to enhance the quality of their lives. My wish for you is that September begins on a most solid and sound footing, a beginning that offers hope, excitement, and a beautiful fresh breath of goodness to savor and multiply as you appreciate what you have and radiate that goodness to those around you. Now, what I've done on the show notes is include three other posts that have similar topics about this shift into fall, as well as how to savor these last few days of summer. So if you want to check those out, check out the show notes at thesimplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 172. And I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. So this week's Petit Plaisir is very simple. I want to talk about chamomile flowers. Recently, while shopping in my local Trader Joe's, I picked up a bundle of chamomile flowers, and I have a picture of it on my Instagram that I put on today's show notes if you want to take a look at what they look like. I was delighted to find them because I had honestly never seen this flower in the store before and found the subtle scent ideal for the summer home decor I was looking for last week. For fewer than $5, I picked it up and have been enjoying the bouquet in my house over these past seven to 10 days. And they're still going strong. But here's the goodness, the even more extra dose of petit plaisir that they offer. As many of you know, I enjoy a cup of black tea at the end of my day. And if I haven't enjoyed dessert that day, I also enjoy it with a dark chocolate truffle. However, I know that not everyone can tolerate caffeinated tea before bed. So I wanted to suggest chamomile tea and the recipe to make your own at home. So you can either use those fresh flowers if you have the opportunity to find them in your grocery store or your flower shop. And what you'll do with fresh flowers is take the blooms four tablespoons worth and you actually want to pack them down pretty well into your tablespoon, not too loose. But if you don't have fresh or you want to dry your fresh, you just need two tablespoons. Again, also packed uh, packed well into the teaspoon. Now then you just make your tea as you normally would. Put the chamomile, the tea strainer, or however you enjoy your tea. And I also included a recipe on today's show notes for this tea. While it is quite simple, they offer some other ideas to deepen the flavor. Now there have been a lot of um, purported studies that talk about all the amazing health benefits that chamomile provides. But in the most recent decades, these uh, studies have not been confirmed. So I will share with you some of these benefits, but just keep in mind they haven't been completely 
reaffirmed. But it is believed that it can help reduce an upset stomach, it can reduce anxiety, and it's a way of promoting sleep. It has a lovely, soft scent, and many people do enjoy this tea. And if you make your own at home, oh, how simply lovely would that be? So chamomile tea or simply pick up chamomile flowers. They are lovely, delicate, white petaled with yellow centered flowers. I think you'll really find them beautiful and a lovely touch to enjoy these last few weeks of summer. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticated Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, the simplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, now available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon, as well as in paperback, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, a Modern Woman's Guide. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog posts, and to receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to start your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday morning to enjoy the hot cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. A la prochaine.